So welcome to this video on getting started with the Windows 8.1 preview. And the first place to go is actually the preview website. So this is www.preview.windows.com. And you go here and it's got a great video introducing it. There's links to a document that gives you some additional information about the product. So that preview product guide is a great resource. Then you hit download. Now the download page is going to vary depending on which operating system you're actually connecting from. If this is a Windows 8, then it's going to give you the link to an MSU, an update file for Windows 8. If I connect from a Windows RT device, it's going to give me the MSU file for Windows RT device. You're going to run that MSU file. It's going to reboot the machine. Then it's going to prompt you to go to the Windows Store where you'll actually see the full 8.1 update. The other option for 8.1 machines is you can download the ISO file for Windows 8.1, extract it, and then run the setup.exe from there. Be aware, if you're running the Enterprise Edition of Windows 8, you cannot just do any of these preview upgrades. You need to use the 8.1 Enterprise update for that to function. So once you've done this, you're going to end up with your new start screen. And this is one of the first areas where you're going to see a difference. So we have these new type of icons. We have these really small and these extra large. And one of the pain points of 8.0 is you give your machine to someone else and they accidentally move your icons all around. Well, now I swipe up, I hit customize first. Then I can rename the groups. I can select an icon and I can say, is it a large, wide, medium, or small icon? Another great thing I can do now is I can select multiple at the same time and then move them as a group. So in the past you had to individually move each of them and that was pretty painful. Well now I can just move them all very, very easily. I can still shrink them down and move all my groups around if I wanted to do that and expand it back out. We have easy access now to all our applications. So if I just slide up the screen, now I can see all my apps. And I can say by name, I might say the most used. I can say by the date installed so I can quickly see what's new on my machine. I can easily search for a particular application. And I just sweep back down to see the full list. If you're using a mouse, you'll see a little down arrow which allows me to go and access those. One of the nice things I have now, when I personalize, there are animated background wallpapers. I can personalize my background color, my accent color, or I can use my desktop wallpaper, which is what you're seeing here. Whatever wallpaper I have set on the desktop, I'm gonna have on my start menu. Additionally, if I go into my change PC settings, let's look at some of our key options. So it's showing you here some of the top settings you may wanna use. So for example, what I've got here is a slideshow. So on my main lock screen, I have a standard lock screen picture, but I'm saying we'll use a slideshow. And I can add, well, which folders do I actually want to show pictures from on my slideshow? I can say how long to run that for, and I can actually do configurations around my lock screen applications. So if I go into my PC and devices, I can see my lock screen here. And I can see the detail of all those lock screen configurations. Which app can show detailed status? An app can show alarms. I can now access my camera directly from the lock screen. So it's actually a very different settings experience in Windows 8.1. You'll notice a lot of these now go into these sub menus. I can control how my corners and edges work. Autoplay, PC info. All of the major settings are now available within here rather than having to use the control panel. Let's go back and let's lock. So on my lock screen, and what we'll see happen is it's now actually gonna start using photos from my photo album. So I selected there my SkyDrive. As you can see it's animated. It's actually gonna do it as a nice little photo frame. So it's zooming in on that picture. Then it's gonna to flip to another one. It shows some of them side by side. If I wanna access the camera, instead of swiping up to log on, I'm actually going to swipe down and then I can access my camera. So I'll change my camera. There I am. 
I go back to the unlock and the same picture password as before. Now, one thing to do note, if you are going from Windows 8 to 8.1, it will maintain your configuration, but it would have lost your touch gestures. So you will have to go back in and reconfigure the touch gestures you use for your picture password. For my synchronization between machines now, it actually synchronizes a lot more options. So I go to my SkyDrive, Sync Settings. It now synchronizes your start screen. It synchronizes the applications you have in your start screen. So if you have modern applications installed, and then you have another machine that doesn't have them installed, the icon will show with a little download arrow showing you that, hey, this is installed on a different machine. You can actually select to install it on this machine as well. SkyDrive is actually very integrated with really everything that's done now. It's very prevalent in terms of the desktop, your synchronizations. I can see my storage space related to it. I can even go and look at the particular files and how I'm saving documents. So, for example, I could say save to SkyDrive by default. If I take a picture, synchronize it up to SkyDrive. So a lot of control over what I'm doing there. Go back to my start screen. Let's look at the desktop for a moment. So notice I have the start button. So this now gives you direct access easily to the start screen. And in the same way as before, I can right click or I can just hold my finger there. And it's gonna show me these list of sort of power options. Now you'll notice instead of command prompt, it's now showing me Windows PowerShell, but that's completely configurable. Notice I also have shutdown and I can sleep, shut down, restart. If it was a remote session, I could disconnect. I can look at the properties of the taskbar. And under navigation, this is where you start to get a lot of good options. So I can say directly boot to the desktop instead of the start menu. So if this is a desktop environment, you primarily use the desktop. Well, now I can go straight to the desktop. I've configured to show my desktop background on start. If you have multiple monitors, you can configure the start screen to always display on your main display rather than whichever monitor has focus. I can show their apps for you automatically when I go to the start screen. You can list desktop apps first, search everywhere. So you have all these different configuration options. In Explorer, SkyDrive is very prevalent. I can see all my SkyDrive information and it's synchronizing with my machine. Now, one thing you will notice, libraries are gone. But if you like them, you can do view options. And I can say, I want to show my libraries. So you can still have that library view if that's something you are really taking advantage of. So there, my libraries are back again. Another option I have in that menu is you'll notice in that sort of power menu, it was showing PowerShell. I can unselect that, so now it would still show me command prompt. So I hit apply, okay. And now I'll get my command prompt back. So this is really if you're a PowerShell user or command prompt, you can control exactly how that's gonna look. Back on my start screen, we have our applications. There's a lot of new applications, but there's some behavior changes. Let's open up the weather. And let's open up the news. And we'll open up the reading list, which is one of the new applications. So I can scroll in from the left and then back again to see a list of all my applications that are available. So I'll open up Internet Explorer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin weather onto the screen as well. But notice instead of it just pinning to a small edge now, snapping in, I can actually modify the different portions of screen being used. I can actually have more than two applications on the screen at the same time, depending on your resolution. If I do have multiple apps open and I just click on a different application, it hovers in the middle until I say, do I want it to go left or do I want it to go right? So I can now go and tuck that over there. I'll bring that over. I can search and now it's doing me where am I searching files or everywhere so I can just start typing something in here 
I'll type lasagna. And now it's just basically searching all over. So it's powering into Bing. It's using my local applications. Maybe I've got some information there. So it's really searching my local data on the internet and it's integrating all this into one search experience. Now there are a number of changes. So the messaging, the contacts app have all been updated, but I wanna talk about a few of the new ones. So this reading list is actually a great application. So imagine you're browsing the web. So let me just open up the web browser. And one of the things you'll see about IE11 is the tabs are now at the bottom of the screen in the same place as where you type in URL. So say I'm looking at a web page, and you know what, I wanna come back to this later. I'm reading saying I wanna come back to it soon. I can come in here and I can say share, and I'm gonna share it to the reading list. I'm gonna say bookmark that. So now if I go back to my reading application, what I now see is that link as well. So I can actually go and track all the different things I wanna view on my website, and even other applications can hook into here as well, to easily see where I am once I've read something, I just click it and it goes to that page. And when I'm done, I just select it and I click the delete. I've read that, I'm good to go. And of course you can do the same rotations through as we always could in Windows 8. There's a new fitness application that can actually help you track your fitness activities, um, actually help you diagnose medical issues. There's a new music application, new video, integrating with the online Xbox music service. So great experiences here in these applications. There's a built-in calculator. There's a sound recorder application, a scanner, an alarm. So I can tell it to wake me up each day. There's a timer, stopwatch, very easy to configure. If I wanna change the alarm, I just move these dials around for the hours and the minutes, and it's gonna actually go and wake me up at that time, way too early. There's a cooking application. So again, I'm using this by date install, so it makes it easy to see what are the new applications. It says food and drink. And this app has a nice little feature. So let's again search for, I like lasagna. And let's say I want a world's best lasagna. How could you not wanna make that? So imagine you are cooking, and they actually demonstrated this in build. So there's a hands-free mode. And what the hands-free mode does, assuming your machine has a front-facing camera, so this touch-free mode, I just wave my hand to rotate between the different pages of the recipe. And that's the hands-free. i go back through. and so on. I can turn that off and then close the application down. One of the other nice apps I wanted to just quickly cover is the camera. So with the camera application, I'm just gonna click this. And I can point it around and it has this new panorama option. So I click this and I just start moving it around the environment and it's creating different pictures to actually create a full panorama of an environment. This is not terribly exciting looking in my office, but it gives you this great capability if you were outside and sort of looking at some fantastic environment, I can create a nice panorama very, very easily. And it's gonna stitch them together and create me that panorama that I can actually then rotate my screen to actually see all the different elements of. So it's just an, a cool feature of the camera that it can do those panoramas just built in. Take some time to look at the i11. It's got some great performance improvements. There's a great site, uh, the test drive, will actually show you how great the i11 performance is. You can go and compare that to other browsers. The photo application, has some great capabilities now built into it. So if I scroll up, I can do edit, and it's gonna give me some options around fixing, light, color, 
various effects, selective focus. I can change my saturations, for example, here. Just giving you some, I know nothing about photography, so I don't really know what most of these things do. But it lets you do some of these basic changes all through this inbuilt application. It has an auto suggest on the touch keyboard. So I start typing, it's bringing me up suggestions. To select one, I swipe across the space bar. And then I hit space. And it's, <laughs> this is privileged information. So apparently I can work out what I've ever typed in the past just by its suggestions. But it's helping me type faster. As I start typing, I can use those suggestions as part of my work. So that's just another example of the ways this helps. So there are some really nice features available in this preview. Take some time, look around. The existing gestures all work. Yes, we have the additional of the start button now to give us easy access to the start screen. We can jump straight to the desktop if you prefer to work that way. Look at all the new applications. Use this filtering as a great way to find what are all the new applications introduced with 8.1, your sound recorder, the scanning, the reading list, the calculator. There's gonna be a help and tips application when it RTMs. It is important to realize that if you install this preview, you can upgrade when the RTM ships, but you will have to reinstall all of the modern and desktop applications. It's gonna keep your settings and data, but you'll have to reinstall applications. So when you're deciding which machine you wanna upgrade with this preview, make sure you do realize that whatever you do install it on, there's gonna be some work at release time to put your apps back on. So this really just concludes my quick overview of some of the major changes in 8.1. Enjoy.